Google. It has been around for quite a while now and kids born in the 2000s are actually younger than Google. That's kind of crazy. Our society is so advanced now, a lot of people don't know how to use this old tool. And I'm not talking about AI or any fancy features. Just Google searching up simple things like, for example, what's the average weight of a zebra? You wouldn't type in what's the average weight of a zebra. That's like what your grandmother does. I mean, sure, it will probably bring out the same result, but you can get there a lot faster if you just turn these eight words, five, six, seven, if you just turn these seven words into two words, zebra, wait, and boom, the same result. So the rule here is to search with as little words as humanly possible. Here are some examples. How to remove keyboard key from MacBook keyboard pro. Okay, that's pretty long. Turns into MacBook remove key. Exactly the same result. What's the best restaurant to eat sushi turns into sushi Madrid. The same result, just two words. Most often, Google will even give you better results if you use fewer words. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Now, if you also want to turn into more of an expert, what you can also use are Google search operators. What are they? For example, if you want Google to give search results from only a specific website, for example, Reddit, because a lot of things can be easily found on Reddit, but not Google, I can type in MacBook Air review and then add site colon reddit.com. This will make it so Google only shows results from Reddit. As you can see, all of these websites are Reddit. And you can do this with any kind of website, not only Reddit. Ikea, Walmart, Facebook, YouTube, anything. But on the other hand, what if you keep searching Google and the same website that you don't want to see keeps popping up? For example, if I keep searching MacBook Air review, it just keeps showing me Reddit. I'm so tired of Reddit. So to get rid of search results from a specific website, instead of site, I can put minus and then click enter. Now you'll see that none of these results come from Reddit. Another cool search operator that you might want to mingle with is related. It shows you websites that are related to another website. So if I type related and a colon sign and then a website's URL after that, for example, YouTube, I will see websites that are related in some way to YouTube. So Twitch, Vimeo, Reddit again. So this might be useful in cases when you're shopping and trying to find similar websites or writing a final paper for your gender studies degree. What can also happen sometimes is for Google to keep auto-correcting a key phrase or show related results, but not the exact thing that you typed into the search bar. To fix that, you can put your search term inside quotes, and this will tell Google that you want results for exactly what's inside the quotes. For example, if I'm searching banana red kiwi thing and that's a zebra, with this search phrase Google might not be sure which of these keywords to pick and what result to show me. Let's see what happens if I click. Oh, it thinks I'm a robot. So right now it showed me kiwi banana results, but there's no zebra. So if I wanted Google to for sure include zebra in the search results, I would put it in quotes and now every single result will have zebra. So as you can see, here's zebra, that's a zebra, zebra snacks, zebra. This is sometimes useful if Google is focusing on the wrong keyword, especially for writing essays or papers for university, because in order to do research for those, you usually have to put in a lot of keywords. But what if you don't know what the best key phrase is? It's also possible to search up multiple search terms with only one search operation by using the OR search operator. This could come in handy when you don't know the best phrase to type in order to find the information you're looking for. And it's especially useful for when you're trying to find information that might be found with multiple search terms. For example, baguette or French bread. You might not use this one too frequently, but the next one you probably will. It's the file type operator and it's very useful when you're trying to find images that have a PNG format, for example. So if I type baguette and then put file type PNG, it will only give me search results that have a PNG file type. Since obviously PNG is a picture format, I have to click on images and all of these will have a PNG format. If I click on the first one, you can already see 
see that it has a transparent background, which is a thing that PNGs are known for. As you'll also probably notice, the search operator disappeared and instead has been applied over here. This is also another tip. If you're searching for images, you can choose their color, their size, type, file format, and even usage rights if you don't want to be considered a pirate. What's also useful is if you're trying to find headline ideas or ideas for your YouTube video, you can use the wildcard operator to let Google know that you want to insert a missing word into a key phrase. This is very useful for search engine optimization when writing a blog post or searching for keywords that go with a certain topic. For example, what's the best something, I'm gonna put a snowflake here, for MacBook, you can navigate back to the snowflake and if you click on it, Google will try to fill in the missing word in the middle. So what's the best monitor for the MacBook? What's the best mouse, docking station, apps, hub, games, monitor, monitor, browser, etc. By the way, this also works inside of YouTube search. Also, if you've been thinking of starting a YouTube channel, I recently put together this long ass notion page, which has everything I've ever learned about YouTube from making more than 180 videos. I leave a link to it in the description. And maybe you're trying to find cool wallpapers for your screen, just like my wallpapers over here, link in the description, but lower resolution images keep popping up on Google. You can define the resolution that you're looking for in pixels by typing image size colon and then typing in the resolution in pixels. The first number are horizontal pixels and the second number are vertical pixels. And as you can see, all of these zebra images, especially this one, have a 9 by 16 aspect ratio and a 1080p resolution. So I hope this was helpful to someone out there and I'll see you in the next one.